Was it a lot to live in Tom Ripley's head for a year? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it was, because he's very ideologically different to me. Yeah. I mean, of course, you have to find a co kind of commonality. Yeah. But yeah, it's the isolation of the guy. You know, I like, um, I like people. I'm an Irishman. Yes. And, you know, part of our thing is community. And so this is a guy who's solitary. And I also get a huge amount of energy from the other actors. And we have incredible actors but a yeah. huge swathes of it are just him on his own yeah and you're in a foreign city we shot it during the, the latter stages of the pandemic so people couldn't come and visit yeah. and i couldn't go home without you know quarantining and we're very careful not to so it was kind of lonely it was a it was a it was a, a a lonely experience in some ways but you know it was a privilege because um you have to um you have to take these opportunities to play these this kind of iconic um, character and um, so uh, yeah, it was tough. So do you have to, you have to find some <coughs> empathy for him? Somehow? Absolutely. I, I don't find it hard here. I don't. I don't think this is a guy who is a. He lives on the outskirts of the, of the community. You know, he's completely dismissed by people. He's very talented. He's a con artist, but he's nonetheless an artist. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's not. He doesn't get access to all the stuff that yeah. that, that, that these, these rich. Um, Playboys and their yeah. um, friends get, get get in Italy. And so there's something that Patricia Eismuth is talking about, which is about who gets access to all the great things in life. It's like, I think a phrase you used was it's it's about not being invited to the party. Exactly right. Yeah. 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 And so you can't just shut out people without something uh, dark um, emerging. People recognize yeah. themselves in Tom Ripley. Otherwise, they wouldn't root for him. And the great achievement of her books, and I think in, in our in our story, is that you root for this guy. You want him to get away with it. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't do that if you were, if you didn't recognize some part of his personality. And he's a very vulnerable person, and he's mm -hmm. charming. Um, but yeah, you, we wanted it to feel like what it would like to be Tom Ripley, mm -hmm. uh, rather than what it would be like to be a victim of Tom Ripley. Ripley really is the center of this story. Yes, this yeah, this, Tom Ripley appears in probably 95% of every single scene. So he's over eight hours, which is extraordinary. But this really focuses on, on, on one character. So it requ required a lot, of, a lot of stamina. Yeah, because you're, it's also, there's also, for periods, not a lot of dialogue. Right, yeah. It's, and, it's yeah. you alone mm -hmm. dealing with your crimes. Yeah, yeah, Tom is, you know, um, a, a talented person. And so to see a, a character think, mm -hmm. and also, uh, crucially, I think, making mistakes. He makes yeah. a lot of mistakes. He's yeah. not a natural-born killer or a, a natural-born psychopath, I don't think. Something happens, and he commits this uh, atrocity, and he has to, to, to find his way out of it. And so I think the pleasure for the audience is allowing them the time to watch him think, how am I going to get out of this, or to sit back and think or, or or else to sort of see him um mm -hmm. think really really quickly which is a great pleasure i think i think that's underestimated sometimes just watching mm -hmm. the machinations of, of a character's mind silence is a powerful thing in this mm. show absolutely there's yeah. a lot of it mm. well that's what i think makes the makes the audience i love things that particularly it's in the theater as well still it's like stillness in, in the in the theater you always feel like when you go into a stage you have to sort of use the stage as much as possible but once yeah. you go incredibly still yeah and you have the audience listening to you and attentive it's an incredible atmosphere and the same i think happens on on screen mm -hmm. audiences love to to be engaged they want to be there with you they don't yeah. want to be spoon-fed everything the stuff that we don't like is when we're like oh we know we yeah. get it well if the drama is well constructed the silence leaves yeah. you waiting for something Absolutely. which it's is potent. very powerful it's thing. potent right. yeah why did you want to be an actor Wow, what a question. Um, well, I was very shy when I was young, younger and I had um, a lisp, you know, a, a, a speech impediment when I was a kid. So I went to speech and drama classes to sort of do seashell, seashell on the seashore and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, How old were you? Maybe seven or eight. Yeah. And okay. um, uh, so my mother brought me to a speech and drama class in Dublin. Yeah. Um, Did you go willingly? Not originally, no. I didn't love the speech section, but that something happened when I did the drama section, which yeah. is to get up and play a character. And even though I would be terrified going into these drama classes and having to get up and say a poem or do whatever, I found it exhilarating, and I didn't feel didn't feel shy. What was the exhilarating part? 
I suppose it's in some way to do with being seen that it's it's uh. that that it has never left me actually. I like I like the idea that you can reveal yourself without having to reveal yourself. Mm-hmm. And somebody said that a beautiful thing about acting is that you can experiment with lots of different parts of yourself that's but remain intact. Yeah. So you're taking a risk but you're you're kind of you're you're still okay. Mm-hmm. And you know the the more I act the more I believe that it isn't about pretending to be somebody else but finding that that person within you. And uh, you know I love that expression that that we contain Multitudes. Multitudes, yeah. Because we do. We really do. The It's interesting because I, I, I often hear actors talk about, particularly when they want to work with a certain director because that director makes them feel safe. Mm. Safe enough to take risks, mm. which is an interesting combination. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's true. You've got to, you've got to feel like somebody is um, seeing what you do. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that the theater, for example, is should be a safe place. I remember that came up in a conversation a few years ago. And it should be a safe place to a certain degree, but I feel like that's where we have to push mm-hmm. push the boundaries and we have to be able to ask questions. And um, uh, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's extraordinary to me, um, you know, working on this where I was in every day, I was very aware because I've been in that situation myself where you go in for two days and you've got two days mm-hmm. um, in a show and you come in and you've got all these ideas yeah. but you don't know the people and you don't feel safe enough yeah. to sort of say I actually would love to just cut that line or can I, I just have a question and you don't feel mm-hmm. and then because you don't feel safe to speak you give them a version that you think that they might want and an opportunity might be lost so I think it's very important when the actors come in that, that I make them feel Mm-hmm. Look, if you want to say something and they go, is it okay for me to cut this line or to say this word or say this and, mm-hmm. or whatever question it might be, because that can be the real difference. Yeah. You know, somebody who plays a hotel clerk is as much a uh, part of it as somebody who's got pl- playing the lead. Because in the theater, when the person the, who plays the butler who comes on and says, mm-hmm. your carriage awaits, madam, yeah. is there every single day at the warm up. For, yeah. the, for the three month run, you know about their family, you know, you know, yeah. you go for dinner afterwards as, as, as much as the guy who's playing Hamlet. Mm-hmm. So so that part and whereas the person who's who's playing the butler in, in a movie is there for three hours in the morning. So yeah. you don't get that that sort of um, yeah. troop vibe, which I I, I, I I really think is one of the pleasures of, of being an actor. Yeah. Being part of a troop. You also study painting. Yeah. Were those were acting and painting in competition with each other in some way? A little. They, they were. They were. My mother was an art teacher, and um, my mother died very recently. And, I'm sorry. Um, um, thank you. Her lifeblood was art, the arts. Yeah. Uh, she uh, really encouraged me to paint and draw, and I was I had a proficiency for it. And so on the very same day that I got my first movie, when I was seventeen. Um, on exactly the same day, I, I, I uh, won a, a, a scholarship to educate myself in art. So right. I, I had this huge. Um, uh, it was kind of the, roads, the, the, the moment of big decision. Yellow, yeah. So I chose show business. How did you how did you measure them against each other? Well, I guess I felt like I could always draw and paint even even if I um, I could do that on the weekends, but you can't be like an actor on the weekends. Mm-hmm. You know, you could do amateur stuff as well, but it was an opportunity. And um, but there's something that I I still feel like I'd like to just take that time, have a little bit of time where I could just really develop. Because right. what's very frustrating, like all things, is that if you don't exercise those muscles, you lose them. And so yeah, yeah. it's a lovely way of observing people, as because you know the more more recognizable you are as an actor, you're observed, and it's part of the pleasure and the necessity I think for actors is to be able to look at what other people are what other people are up to you don't always want people to be looking at you right um, so that's a good way of observing people yeah well it's a totally different it is it's all about seeing isn't it yeah it's exactly it's seeing and being 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 seen yeah. yeah so you said you still paint though right I do I do yeah not as much as I not as much as I as my mother would like me to sorry mom what typically do you paint People, people. Yeah, yeah. Well, so when I when I when I um, first started getting recognised on the tube in London, I, yeah. I didn't like it. I still don't really like it. Yeah. But that's okay. Um, but what was a very good way of 
combating that sort of anxiety was to draw people on the tube. Yeah. And then I uh, draw the people on the tube, and then I give I would give them the thing, and then I'll get off the tube. You know what I mean? They'd be like. They wouldn't even notice that they would have been there. Yeah. But it seemed like a nice thing to do, and it made me... Yeah. It did two things at once. Yeah. Did acting come easily to you? It's a good question. I feel like it does come easy to me. I, I Easy in, to a certain degree. Once you find out the m machinations of a character, mm -hmm. I find like it, it a real challenge. You know, it's something that I say endlessly, but you play a part. Yeah. Playing should come easy to you, otherwise it's not really playing. So, right. so I think sometimes it's overpraised the amount of work and the the, the because what people respond to is lightness, mm -hmm. and uh, so sometimes your work is to be able to be as alive to the other person as possible yeah. and to be just because we don't know what way a conversation is going to go mm -hmm. until it happens. Yeah. And so that's what the art of acting is. I always say it's it's like um, the art of pretending that you don't know what you're going to say next when you do know what you're going to say next. <laughs> and so you have to unlearn the behavior. And conversations can go in any way. I think it's unlikely that we're about to have an argument now. Right, yes. But it could happen. Yeah. Or something could happen that mm -hmm. an atmosphere changes. And I love the idea of sort of um, being alive, being mm -hmm. alive to that. So you can't prepare for that. So some of the time, sometimes I think, of course, research and doing your work is very important. But your number one priority, I think, as an actor, well, two things. One is to be able to listen and to mm -hmm. be present. And the other is to have a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Why do you think acting came naturally to you? I think I really love people. Yeah. Both my parents are um, uh, people, 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 people. Yeah. Um, or were people, people. Um, so it's a way of it's a way of um, understanding people and maybe forgiving people. And mm -hmm. what was difficult about Tom Ripley is a quite a difficult person to access. Yeah, the key to it for me really was understanding that there is a big blankness. There's a vast mm -hmm. unknowableness to the character that you have to accept. Um, that you have maybe have a lot of questions about him, but they're not necessarily going to be answered. And once you once you understand that, then you can have an empathy with them. But actually, a lot of people are strangers to themselves, you know. And mm -hmm. so, it's interesting talking about the character because people say, Do you, "Have you ever, have you ever come across a Tom Ripley character?" Mm -hmm. And I think the more in interesting question is, what part of Tom Ripley is within us? Playing villains really have kind of been turning points for you. Right. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, starting with with Moriarty. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious if you saw parallels between yeah. Ripley and Moriarty. A little bit I do. A little bit I do. I yeah. feel like um, I don't see Tom as a villain, but I do see Moriarty as a villain. Uh, interesting. Because I think Moriarty, I suppose it's just a different tone in the in the writing, but... Uh, he enjoys it. He would enjoy being called that, I think. Yeah. It is interesting with those those two characters. I certainly know that when I was younger, I was very, when I was in my 20s and early 30s, I was very, uh, <laughs> I looked quite innocent and, and you, you know, youthful. Yeah. And um, so the stuff that I was seen for as an actor, I was like, I can, there's some darkness that I, within me yeah. that I'd like to exorcise. And I remember the audition for Moriarty very well. And I thought, these people are like, why, why is he here? <laughs> and I remember thinking, I've got to frighten these people in this, in this audition. <laughs> and so I did. Yeah. And you enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, I think it's really important. It's a very healthy thing to explore that side. Some of the darkest people in the world, to my mind, yeah. are the people who say, I don't have an angry bone in my body. Yeah. Or, you, have to, you have to understand your darkness in order to, to, to um, let your, light, your lightness shine. Yeah. You know? We all have it within us. And... Yeah. Um, and just to be aware of it, that's what I'm saying, is, 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 is he it's healthy. <laughs> it must have been fun. It was really fun. <laughs> she was terrified. <laughs> but I got a call back. <laughs> the epic scene by the pool is... Well, that was, you know, that scene didn't exist. So they had to uh, construct a scene, an audition scene, to see if this, these actors could act it. And um, they liked what I did with it, so they ended up putting it in the, in the, in the show. So initially you were just going to be a face? I was just going to be a face that said some murky two little words like Hello yeah. Sherlock or something. <laughs> so, um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautifully, beautifully written scene and very playful, you know. Yeah. Very playful. It's kind of both sides of you in a way. Yeah. Yeah. 
the thing that I'm really obsessed with is both and. I have a little production company, and it's called Both and. Yeah. Because um, I believe, not just in relation to acting, but I believe that things are never just one thing. They're both something and yeah. and something else. So that yeah. you can be, you can be both terrified and exhilarated at the same time. Yeah. You can be both. And actually, that's the most interesting. Absolutely. Is there a particular moment w when you're acting that is your greatest thrill? Yeah. What is that? There's no greater thrill when you are acting with some uh, wonderful uh, actor and you have a laugh. Yeah. And the audience start to laugh. In like a wave? Hold, yeah, in a wave. And you have to hold it. It's like surfing. And then you have another line and, and, and you're playing tennis with somebody who's an expert tennis player. Yeah. And you just, you play with the audience expectation. I find that so, it's like, it's like drugs and it's, it's so immediate and why I, I, I could never give up the theater because it's, it's the actor's medium. Yeah. And, and sort of conversely, a moment that can shock an audience into, into silence or having, I, I find it still so moving that adult people can go into a dark room with 400 other adults yeah. and, and willfully be told a lie <laughs> that they know is fake. Yeah. Like children, tell me a story, mom. Yeah. And they go and they allow themselves because they want, you know, storytelling to me is, is a human need. It's an absolute human need and the arts is a, is, is a human need. So I, could, I see that, I just find it so moving that people, people still want, want to do that. Yeah. When you did Fleabag, yeah. you said, you said I had to put down my anger. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was the anger you had to put down? I think it was um, understanding that the people who worked in the Catholic Church in yeah. Ireland, specifically, I suppose I was thinking about, were also human beings too. When I was growing up in Ireland, there was a huge amount of um, scandal i suppose the word about yes. abuse within the in, within the catholic church that hasn't dissipated actually it's all over the world yeah so i suppose in playing that character you have to understand that that's a human being behind there you know you know playing a, playing a priest and um i don't know i suppose i my feeling is that it's dangerous and perhaps unnecessary to desexualize any person yeah because i think where does that energy go and i think it was all that um looking at what what people's um, something that was considered honorable was actually concealing an awful lot of actually just real deep shame. When you take a role like that, are you aware going in that you're going to have to have that conversation with yourself? A little bit. I suppose it depends. It completely depends. Whereas why Fleabag was such a great masterpiece to my mind that Phoebe um, created is because it's got such soul. And with comedy, you have to think, where's the depth here? Mm -hmm. Or what's actually going underneath? Because uh, that's what comedy is—the great is the great truth teller. Mm -hmm. And conversely, if you're playing Hamlet, which everybody goes, "Oh my God, it's really dangerous. It's about grief. It's about, about Prince Drep." Yeah. Uh, and Hamlet is hysterically funny. Yeah. It's so funny, and so you have to look for the light, um, and because that's the way life is. It's both and. Mm -hmm. It's both tragic and comic, you know. And that's the truth, and that's why, that's I suppose that's what I would look for when I'm going into, in, into into things is. I love the idea that questions are going to emerge and, and you just try and truthfully find an answer to them. Yeah. I'm just wondering when you look at it, are you, are you aware that this is going to pop up in your mind, the whole history of the Catholic Church? No, actually. Well, well, the very, very first day that Phoebe and I had a conversation, she hadn't written the character fully yet, but she, yeah. she had me in her head and we wanted to talk about love. And we had this extraordinary day in, in Soho in London we, where we walked around and we had a three or four hour conversation. We talked about exactly that. Well, what, how do you make it not a cliche? You know, these two characters, a, a priest falling in love, love with um, uh, um, uh, a woman in, in her 30s and, and, and vice versa. And we went into, there's a Quaker meet, meeting house and uh, we just talked about spirituality in a way because it was such a lovely thing to explore. And, mm -hmm. um, and then you just distill all that stuff, but it's yeah. there, it's present. And I think that's, I think that's really that, that, that uh, soulfulness, I think is there even in, even in the brightest of comedies. And I certainly think it's there in Fleabag. Yeah. Um, were you at all surprised what happened with that character? Yes. 
It's, it sort of oh, took over your life for a while. It sort of does, but it still does. I was in LA recently, and you know, you're crossing the street, and people are like, "Hot priest!" They're out of their cars, and you're crossing on a pedestrian crossing. And you think, <laughs> I don't really know how to help you with that, madam. <laughs> how do you respond to that? You can't. What do you say? You yeah. just say hello. Why are you? <laughs> you know, it hasn't passed, or whatever. The <laughs> <they think>. <laughs> Hot <laughs> priest. <laughs> yeah. People are so funny. Yeah, people are. People are. It's great. There are worse things to be called. Let's face yeah, it. no, that's absolutely true. You're at a point probably where parts are coming to you. I would say that that's somewhat true. Yeah, and then there are things As that my, I, you know, there's the things that I'd still like to do that I, you know, what would you still there. like to do? Uh, I'd love to be in a musical. Would you? Yeah, just have to learn how to sing. Yeah, yeah. I think there's something completely joyful about musicals. Yeah. But maybe not completely joyful about the way I sing. So how's your voice? It's it's lacking in confidence. Have you been like walking around your apartment singing just to sort of get ready for this possibility? Uh, yeah, all my life I have. Have you ever auditioned for a musical? I auditioned for <laughs> when I was a kid when my voice was breaking about eleven. I auditioned. Oh my god, even thinking about it now, for the Sound of Music to play one of the Von Trapp kids. Yeah. Oh, I was right at that. Time. It, was yeah. not, it was not pleasant for anyone. Yeah, and you're still living with that trauma. I'm still living. Like... Can you see it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's still here. How did you deal with rejection in the beginning? Um, not not, not too badly, I don't think. Mm. What you want, I really notice if any actor will tell you this, is they go, "I did a good audition." Mm. If you go in and you go, "I I I did really well," I can understand there are loads of reasons why you may not get cast in something. Yeah. It depends on who else they have or what you're like juxtaposed beside yeah, another yeah. actor. Whatever it is, they might be looking for a famous person, they might be looking for whatever it is. But if you go in and you get the opportunity, you think, I know I did really well. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good feeling. And then you may not get it and you go, okay. Yeah. When you don't get in the room, it's very, very difficult because you can cope with the with the rejection. So I was I was I was okay. I I, I quite enjoyed auditioning because I saw it as a, an opportunity to just act in front of people. Yeah. You know, rather than just in front of, you know, of yeah. the mirror. Do you watch your own movies and shows? Some of them. You do. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, don't love I don't love it. You don't love it. No. No. That's why I love acting in the theater because performing in the uh, theater is the only art form, or one of the only art forms, yeah. where you don't have to see the result of what you're doing. Right. You write a book, you can read the book, you make a movie, you can see the movie. Yeah. Uh, you paint a picture, you see it. There's something completely freeing about acting in the theatre, and the only way you really see it is through the audience's um, mm. perception of you. And so you can imagine, you, your imagination is completely um, uh, on fire, you know? I mean, they put Hamlet, I remember, on television, um, the, the recorded version that I did, and I was devastated. Wow. And I was, oh, I just thought it was horrific. You just see all the cracks and you see your stupid big face and your voice. Yeah. It's an absolute living nightmare. So how did you approach doing Vanya then? Because you recorded that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that. I never will. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have, what, not eight, nine different characters? Yeah, nine, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, ten times, the nine times the nightmare. <laughs> so I, don't, I, will, I will never see that. I think you said about seeing yourself in All of Us Strangers, you, you said you were surprised at how vulnerable you yeah, seemed. Yeah, yeah. What did you see there? Yeah, I suppose I saw, it was very personal, that, that film. And it required me to go back to sort of a childish place, you know, yeah. a place of vulnerability and fear. And uh, it was very, um, almost shocking to me to see how vulnerable I looked. And um, mm -hmm. uh, that script was so extraordinary and not my own life biographically, but certainly emotionally very, you know, I understood. I understood the um, the feelings that that character had. Yeah, when you saw yourself looking that vulnerable, what what did you see? I felt, and I still feel, about the absolute transformative nature of um, of art. Yeah, I really believe that so passionately, and um, I think that it's such a uniquely human. Mm -hmm. thing that we can do to pr have arts it, it distinguishes us from the other species right. and we're able to do this thing that that helps us through mm -hmm. when i saw that i felt god what a miracle that's something that i was so ashamed of and fearful and um fearful of that i contained within myself could be used to be of use to other people not right. just myself 
And I think the arts are of such use to people. And I felt like whatever pain that I was able to go through, what a cathartic and wonderful thing that I was able to look at that. And even though it was difficult for me to watch, I absolutely know that that film has touched a lot of people and people go, I recognize myself in that character. And that makes me feel proud. Do you have any aspirations to direct? I do a little bit, if I'm honest, yeah. yeah. And maybe, you know, my mom was a teacher and my sister is a teacher and my father worked, worked with young people. So there's, uh, okay. there's something about that that I find, um, um, you know, really, really moving about, you know, spending your life yeah. learning how to do something and then having a, a small idea and then helping somebody else try and find their confidence or something.